What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos is provide you guys some upcoming earnings, some upcoming events to get you prepared for the week ahead. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily content as well on Hemi 137 on X. And before we get started, let's go ahead and drop a thumbs up to go ahead and get the message out. And let's get this thing kicked off. So this past week, uh, I've talked about the past two weeks uh, there really wasn't anything major scheduled. There has been a lot of Fed members. This week is also the same thing. There will be a lot of Fed members as well uh, speaking. And they have essentially uh, had a lot of influence over intraday moves. Now, Powell, really ultimately what matters is unless the Fed member is a voting member, uh, which changes, and uh, unless it's Powell, really, uh, Powell will dictate the direction. Some voting members will dictate interday moves. Uh, and also ultimately understand as well that um, there can be a lot of confusion, essentially, which comes with Fed members speaking. So this past week, we've for the past couple of weeks, we've had a lot of Fed members speaking, just giving their thoughts and their, op their opinions, essentially, on what they expect for rate cuts. Now, uh, again, there's been a lot of different opinions, a lot of different uh, scenarios. Essentially last year, we came from a, a point that we thought we would have multiple cuts before the end of last year that changed and they thought that we would get cuts by March of this year. Here it is March and we have not had any cuts. And then the projection keeps changing. It's now changed from July to September. That being said, what is leading up into another big week? By the end of this week, we start kicking off. Well, we kick off during the week. We start kicking off earnings this week. Uh, but the big players start on Friday when we start getting uh, the banks involved. Uh, so being said, let's look at this past week. This past week, like I've said, there's a lot of big information that's coming out. I said they've tried to... Uh, essentially filter all the news or not allow any news to go out there, any big news to go out there until earnings time. But the problem being is that everything is fall. The wheels are falling off right now. We've talked about this for many months and I've talked about how this could be delayed and it has been delayed. Uh, numbers are essentially being manipulated to paint a utopic picture when people are all over social media talking about how things are extremely difficult uh, people making, you know, three times average uh, minimum wage and they are still struggling to make ends meet. Uh, these are all major, major issues that are currently going on. That inflation is out of hand. And so with all that being said, again, you can if you dig three layers deep, you realize that there is more to the story that once actually being told that the devil is always in the details. And that is exactly what is going on. And if you're just reading headline news, you're not going to understand why uh, you may feel like you're essentially uh, segregated from everybody else because of the fact that it seems like everything is just utopic and you're struggling to do anything uh, just to essentially uh, provide shelter and provide food for yourself. So with that being said, um, let's take a look at some things and kind of go over what's been going on over the past week. So the past week, uh, we've had a lot of Fed members talking, which played into a lot of different things going on this week. Um, and I've talked about this. The Fed uh, were essentially uh, giving perspective on the cuts. And this is where I'm all leading to this. Sorry, I've got a tan going on a tangent there. But ultimately, uh, what is happening is this past week, we got a lot of mis mes mixed messages, essentially saying that we would have, you know, quite a few rate cuts uh, by the back half of this year. First, it was supposed to be the beginning half, then they shifted it to the back half. Now they're saying it was three. And then now they're saying it's two. And they said it's one. And then now they're saying it may not even happen this year. And something we've talked about is inflation is starting to creep back in. And that is the biggest concern. We can't cut if inflation is creeping back up and we're reporting fantastic numbers when, in fact, we all know that things aren't fantastic. And so with that being said, over the past week, we had non-farm payrolls. We added 303 thousand jobs that was the actual versus the estimated 214,000 the problem with this is being 
it's about 10 or 11 out of 13 uh, of the last essentially job reports have been revised way down. We're not, we're talking like hundreds of thousands of jobs and something I've talked about. And I mentioned on non farms is not only that is a lot of these jobs that are being created or, or majority vast majority of them are being part-time jobs while cutting a lot of the full-time jobs. So people are working two to three jobs. And again, they can't make ends meet. And normally part-time essentially means that you don't have to pay full benefits for a lot of employees, which helps the companies because the companies are trying to save um, save their profitability. You know, and something we've seen over the past week too is California's essentially established uh, $20 an hour for um essentially any fast food, the fast food industry. And essentially a lot of fast food is closed, closed down over the past week. It's something I've talked about. And I mentioned back when uh, UPS, when there was that, with a whole fight about uh, the, with the union and then wanted a higher pay, they won, I think it was like $175,000 a year for their drivers. And then shortly after, guess what happened? Essentially, almost a whole uh, a huge, massive layoffs um, amount of layoffs occurred shortly after the fact. Because you understand these these companies aren't as profitable as it may seem, as there's a lot of overhead expenses for a lot of different things. And again, understand that again, um, the the misleading information that uh, you know it's always the rich and everything else, and it's they're. I'm not trying to get in conspiracy theories because it's very easy when you start getting along a lot of these different things. But when you when you're in the market, you see the banks and the way they manipulate the markets, and then you realize uh, that it leads to um, you know manipulation and uh, corruption and all kinds of stuff that is currently going on. And in reading the books, there's uh, specific books out there that give you great detail of how this whole uh, debt-based system works. And I highly advise that if you're going to be in the market, you need to know how the dollar works and where it came from. And, you know, since we got off the gold standard and essentially we are on the petrodollar, which we're on the verge of potentially losing the petrodollar because of BRICS and uh, a bunch of nations are tired of essentially the U.S. weaponizing the dollar. And so with that being said, you are getting uh, massive global uh, tensions occurring around the world. Uh, you also had essentially Taiwan have a major uh, earthquake over the beginning of the week, uh, which they had to shut down the facility. I guess there was some damage, I guess, to the uh, machine as well. The machines they have there for making the chips and understand that they are essentially... I think they produce like 60% of the semiconductors in the world. And this is why there's a lot of tension between China and the U.S. right now, because it's essentially a race to AI at this point. And so whoever can uh, lead in the charge with AI is essentially going to pull us out. Because right now, uh, you know, despite even though all the corruption that's going on, we are still in better position than the rest of the world, sadly. And with that being said, it's going to be a race to AI because that is going to give us the production we need for the spending that we have. Our spending is out of control. Uh, people can't keep up. You, again, you can create money and all that. That's fine and great and dandy. You can pull that out of anywhere and they continue to spend. That causes inflation because of the fact that you don't have enough um, production occurring. But to be able to solve that issue, and China's even you know 10 times worse than we are, if to solve the production issue, you need to start incorporating AI. You need to start incorporating robotics uh, to be able to get us there. So that being said, uh, again, uh, going back to non-farm payrolls. Now, again, very manipulated, a lot of part-time work. Uh, again, they've revised what the average work week is. is only 32 hours compared to the 40. Uh, so that is, is taking into account a lot of these part-time jobs. And so this is where these massive, crazy, ridiculous numbers are coming from. The environment in which you are in is not the same environment you grew up in. It is changing dramatically and has been essentially accelerated since we've had the pandemic and all and all of uh, the supply constraints because everybody had to work from home. And then um, 
and understand the impact that's had and and what is occurring right now and what we're going through over the, what we'll, we will be going through over the next couple of years. So with that being said, uh, the Federal Reserve also reported the largest loss in history at 114 billion dollars. And this is a it's a big eye opener on how everything is essentially done in the way uh, the dollar is essentially divided and able to uh, cr essentially create money out of thin air, like they say, and, and then essentially um, get that money back that they essentially can pay to the treasury. Um, but essentially, ultimately, understand that they bought a lot of bonds back when they were cheap. Uh, so essentially, they, they shot themselves in the foot. And now they're having to owe all that money uh, because now all those bonds are essentially underwater because interest rates are so high. Uh, so this is the same thing that the banks do. This is why they don't bring their books to market because if you saw what the banks were doing, uh, you would be in massive disbelief about how underwater they are. It would be extremely scary. And again, they try to prevent the public from seeing these things because the public doesn't want to deal with it. The average everyday person just wants to you know, pay a couple bills and then go live their life and have a work-life balance and, 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 you know, do whatever they, they feel like doing. Right. And so if it's aside from that, they don't want to know all the details about finance. Like I, even myself, you know, wasn't a huge finance person and I started getting into the stock market and a lot of this stuff ties into, uh, it all ties into one another and, and ties back to politics. You know, I, I hate, I'm not, I don't like politics at all, but, you have to ultimately understand that's where a lot of it is generated from and, and how these things will work. So with that being said, uh, very scary that that's occurring. It's going to get worse over the next couple of years uh, until we get a crash. We need a crash and they are trying to prevent a crash. And it will make things 10 times worse because they're trying to prevent it. It's easier just to let it happen and then uh, recover a lot quicker than uh, letting it build up to this uh, behemoth of a, a of a monster crash, right? So that's the last thing you want to happen. Uh, but it's it's getting to that point, and I do agree that we've had we have been in some sort of rolling recessions. If we've, we've seen tech hit extremely hard over the past year and a half, uh, we're seeing a lot of industries that still haven't recovered that aren't industry leaders. All your big name brands, your Nikes, essentially your Teslas, your Apples, all these companies have been hit massively. And these are your best companies that have tons of reserves on hand and they are struggling. But yet still Tesla is doing well. Tesla is still the best selling EV out there. But with that being said, uh, they are still struggling extremely bad. And so we are in a very bad situation, uh, period. And then over the past week, so not only did you have all the information going on with what was going on with the Fed and then juggling what they expect the, the cuts are going to be. And again, nobody knows because we haven't had the events. When we had the event, we get that cut. We know how bad it will actually be. And I think we're on the cusp because we've had Powell kind of grease the skids about a potential cut coming in the near future. So we'll watch and we'll see. But on top of all that, this past week, uh, NATO, NATO was set to join, or Ukraine is set to join NATO, which is a huge no-no for Russia. Russia is feeling threatened that if NATO joins, or if Ukraine joins NATO, uh, that is a huge threat to them, and they will not allow that to happen. They've even essentially threatened nuclear warfare and something like that happening. So with that being said, that caused the market to essentially dive big on Thursday and then understand what that could potentially lead. We've had a lot of big, major global events going on. There's a huge terrorist attack in Russia. Uh, and then our bridge went down, which essentially, uh, you know, funny to say is that it, it was a huge uh, supply that bridge uh, has a lot of supply that goes over it in the fact that you're trying to uh, move stuff over it. Any kind of uh, slowdown of resources is going to cause problems. And um, again, supply chain issues, if we start off with a war, that's going to be a huge problem. We are already dealing with inflation problems and they could get worse, especially with the global tensions. And they also had the administration come on and say they want to cease fire in Gaza. And so what does that ultimately mean is that things are, you have to understand that there's a lot of oil around that area 
uh, that um, you know they produce so much oil in that area that it, if there's any um, delays in, in getting supply out of there, it's going to be a huge, huge issue and, and going to cause more inflation. So with that being said, again, that's all the, the rate drama all tied in. You have to understand all this stuff ties in. So I know it can be confusing, uh, but ultimately trying to provide more clarification here on what's going on. And right now what we're seeing is gold, oil, crypto, all rising as bonds fall. Uh, so there's a lot of worry and concern, despite the, you know, the market's still running up. Uh, the markets are running up on, um, you know, not potentially rate cuts, uh, expectations, but ultimately understand when we actually get those rate cuts that the market actually uh, corrects at that top point because it's going to be a major event that causes it to essentially um, cut. And then that's essentially what prices in a recession. And so that is what we're all leading up to in the linchpin I've been talking about uh, for quite a few months at this point. We don't know when it's going to happen. I'm not saying, again, take advantage of the market, take advantage of the market. Uh, but again, you have to look for good sales right now. Uh, and right now we're starting to get some pullbacks. So I hope you've already had your list and you're getting ready uh, to prepare for a potential correction. We don't know how big that's going to be. A lot of people are already claiming 80% of the stock market's gonna crash. We don't know if that's going to happen. We have seen a lot of very historical um, numbers to this point that we haven't seen since the 1930s. Uh, so you have to, you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, but with that also being said, we've also had some major rolling recessions and that does help alleviate some of the uh, potential bigger crash. Uh, so we will see how things play out when we actually get the cut. And again, something I've always talked about is it depends on the news that continues to come out. Uh, we saw some panic on Thursday when, when with the NATO stuff, and then next move would be, is it going to continue to happen? Are we going to continue to get bad news? If we can continue to get bad news, keep feeding uh, this bear, then we could get new fear and the market could car crash and correct pretty well. And understand we are over overextended at this point. And so it, the market will come down very easily, very quickly if we get new fear. And we, we saw on Thursday what new fear looks like. People are uncertain what's going to happen and the market can start selling very, very fast. And so that's where you have to be concerned about and people are just buying the dips like it's nothing. You have to be uh, very cautious where you're at high levels like this. You have to let the market have a natural pullback and then take position from that point or um, just wait for it to correct and start rebounding. And so um, again, everybody's trying to be a millionaire overnight. So uh, you got to be careful with that stuff. That's why risk management is such a big thing. Uh, so with that being said, let's get into the uh, upcoming week. What do we have? We have a lot going on this week. Uh, we have core CPI, which is going to be important because we we're starting to see inflation start to rise. And if inflation keeps creeping up, uh, the Fed have already talked about this. They're going to stay higher for longer. One Fed member actually said uh, potentially even uh, running... Um, Right, essentially raising the rates more than where they currently are and the amount of stress the, the system's already been under with uh, the, just the current rates in which they're at. Uh, we almost made new lows if we would have done another increase before we paused. Uh, so just put that into perspective and understand that we are, inflation is being very sticky around three and it could even start popping back up. And I expect it to start popping back up because we haven't really got into the summer months either. So you aren't really seeing that demand uh, really come in heavy there. So just keep that in mind and how bad it could really get. So we will see and watch. But uh, that is on Wednesday. We do have the Fed meeting notes from the last uh, Fed meeting. Uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, it's just a report. It's not going to say anything else. Could give us some potential details, uh, again, into when they want to cut. Although you're going to have Fed members talking all week. Uh, again, it's just going to be a lot of intraday drama. Uh, the fact that we're getting all this drama even before the earnings starts makes me believe that this earning is going to be uh, pretty horrific. <laughs> uh, so we're going to not only get a lot more cuts and everything else, which is normally a big thing that occurs around earnings, uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, amplified on this earnings cycle and on the next one. And then um, I think from that point, we will find a bottom at some point in the next two quarters. 
uh, the market may start recovering again. It's going to take a long time to recover. You are essentially draining. There's tons of new uh, data out there as well that's pointing to uh, the market. And um, a lot of, again, uh, older generations essentially taking care of their adult kids and understand that they have been dipping into 401ks. They have essentially, they're selling additional properties, all, anything they are trying to liquidate as much as they can to help support their whole family. And another data point that came out this week as well is that um, about 45% of adults uh, live with their family. And then there's about another, I think, 25 to 30%. You're talking about from 18 to 35 year olds or essentially uh, either they have a roommate are living with somebody and then the other uh, a very small small percentage is actually living by themselves because it's just way too expensive to to live as of right now and so keep that in mind and so on top of all that we do have core ppi on thursday as well and i do believe i have a, a consumer sentiment um on friday it does hold some intraday weight, but it's not that, in my opinion, it's not going to be pivotal. I'm trying to only really include like pivotal potential events that are scheduled. Again, always there can always be an event that comes out that is not scheduled, and then that could uh, sway the market very quickly and something I've been trying to help people understand uh, on how the market is exactly working. So upcoming uh, pivot events, we got uh, monetary policy isn't until May 1st, uh, so that's going to be a while before that occurs. And then ultimately understand uh, there's going to be some gaps here. July, September, I know October there. Uh, see these forward projections as well, economic projections. Uh, so these um, monetary policies hold a little bit more weight because they, again, try to guesstimate when a price cut is going to be. But again, they have never, they haven't been correct. So again, that's not going to be something that's scheduled in my opinion. Uh, core, we have one this week. And then uh, again, the next one won't be to the 15th. So we'll have, uh, this would be the only core we're going to have going into the next monetary policy. And then, and then uh, we'll have one or two. Then we'll have two cores in the June meeting. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but big for earnings. We do have earnings. They start on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, but again, nothing that really matters. Again, I'm only going to highlight the ones that really matter, in my opinion. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But the earn earnings start this week on Tuesday. Uh, the big one will be obviously on Friday when we start reporting the big banks. That's something I've talked about, strategic scheduling for these earnings because of the fact, again, that um, if something bad happens, which uh, you can see in the pricing here. And if you know about expected moves that price in during the week, JP Morgan is doubled. I don't think I've ever seen this double in a very long time without huge worry and concern. The fact that it's doubled that much is pretty crazy. Also, the SPX has jumped up about 30 points as well. This was like 50 something last week. Uh, made some good plays on this last week because there wasn't a lot priced in, but now there is quite a bit priced in. If this goes over 100, that means there's a pretty much absolute panic at that point. Uh, but the fact it's up to 86 means that the, the market's really uh, pricing in uh, a potential big move because when the banks report, if something bad happens, uh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So they're expecting a lot this week, which is uh, pretty concerning, especially with all the big banks that are reporting. Uh, you got your JPM, your Wells Fargo, Black, BlackRock, and Citi uh, all reporting on Friday. Um, in the beginning and the more in the morning and then we'll have the full day if it's really bad and remember you can go about the index can go about seven percent down uh before you hit a limit down and then they'll pause they'll close the market for about 30 minutes and then they'll uh reopen it and then if it limit downs another seven essentially they close the market for the remainder of the day and so this is why when i say they strategically place this thing because if that occurs on friday uh, they can take it into the weekend. They can try to, uh, you know, come up with whatever other package they need to come up with uh, to try to fluff everything up, uh, kind of put everything on ice so it doesn't, you don't get full panic mode over the weekend. And then you can kind of control it a little bit better going into Monday. And then um, and we've seen that, right? When SVB ran down, uh, we've seen how they tried to uh, panic rush everything, came up with this new program, uh, the Fed funding program. Uh, so essentially just doing what the banks already do. They just repackaged it and sold it as a as another backup plan to to save the banks and to buy out the bail out the banks. 
And essentially that's what they do, right? And this is something that always occurs all the time. So I'm not expecting moves for this week. Again, um, some big moves in the SP in the general index, and then again on the banks. This is expected because this is what happens if they're reporting that week. It goes up a lot. Uh, Tesla is is a little bit higher this week. It's up at ten. Um, there's a lot going on with Tesla, but I'll talk about that when we get into the chart. Um, and then they Tesla's got earnings not this week but next week as well. So keep that in mind. So that would jump up from ten quite a bit until next week. Uh, Boeing uh, is about normal on six. So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. So as of right now, this is something I've been talking about. This is a channel I um, changed this a little bit because um, that top piece was like all off and it was looking a little congested all up in here. Uh, but like I said, this is essentially our pivot that we had back in October. Uh, this is the pause that we've had and we've gone essentially straight up. This is normal that happens when you are going through times like this and going through these cycles. When you hit a pause, the market will rally for, you know, however months before we get our cuts. We are getting extremely close to a cut. The problem being is on Friday or on Thursday, we had that worry. This was the NATO, essentially the NATO move uh, about what's going on. Now, on Friday, we've essentially retested that. On Monday, if we can't break back above this uh, 52.26, that is a official retest and we could start selling off pretty heavy. We have new worries and concerns. And then if you got that back by bad bank earnings, uh, maybe we start getting more unemployment. Maybe things start getting really, really bad um, and we get a cut. That could be what we need because normally from a pause, it's about three to four months is about what they say. Uh, maybe even six months. It really just depends on when that cut comes. When that cut comes, then it's such a worry and concern. Uh, because of whatever that event is uh, that that forces the fed to have to cut and that price is in a recession and so we'll see again despite all the data the fed really know what the data numbers are this is why they're kind of greasing the skids about a potential cut uh, they're not going to hold it all year if there's an event that occurs uh, then they will actually try to fix it so with that being said we will wait and see until that uh, pin is pulled but right now we have broken out of the channel uh, come on Monday, if we can't hold this uh, 51.57, we're going back down to the 5100 level. And then your next level after that would essentially be the 50.38. But we don't want to get a hold of ourselves, ahead of ourselves here because of the fact that we want to first wait and see how we open. Uh, but ultimately right now we are looking like we have broken the channel and we have retested it on Friday and then on Monday, it's going to be important where we are. Maybe we sit and we hover around here uh, in this channel. And then when we get the actual cut, we break down. Or uh, if we get some new utopic state and things are just magically better, uh, we could potentially break up and make new all-time highs. But we have officially uh, broken the channel. Um, we'll see if we continue to chop through here or if we break this next level down. Um, again, we would at least want a normal correction with the fact that we're starting a normal correction. Uh, right before we start our earning cycle is pretty concerning. So we'll see what happens there, but let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to crypto. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, creating a nice little wedge here. Again, we got um, we are about a week and a half away, uh, essentially, or to about two weeks away from the halving. Uh, that will hopefully put us right here at the end of the wedge and potentially break up or down. I think we're going to break up. Again, depending on the timing, I don't think we're going to start cutting. Um, I hope we don't start cutting in the next couple months. It's always a possibility. Like I said, we've seen an acceleration in layoffs, uh, so it might be here a lot sooner than we think. Uh, but again, could even not see anything until next year. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we're pretty close to about halfway through the year. Uh, so, And we got an election here coming up in November. So... Uh, but we'll see how this does play out again. Um, Bitcoin doesn't really it has its major move after about like four to six months after the having. So just keep that in mind. But we're also we're seeing some new movement in crypto because of the fact that there is also uh, the spot ETF that has occurred this year. Uh, so that has essentially caused a huge rally. Uh, BlackRock is eating up tons of Bitcoin. Uh, so do keep that in mind. 
as a lot of people do want to be invested in that, but they don't want to actually hold the crypto. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, but again, looks like this is really building up for a lot bigger of a move. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that and see how that does play out. Um, let's bring up uh, oil again. We're here real quick. Uh, this is, again, concerning uh, that you're seeing massive moves in oil uh, commodity. When commodities start rising up, uh, that means you're going to get a lot of it's going to be delayed right now. But what you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of inflation. Uh, so you need to be very uh, careful about that and understand what's going to happen there. So, again, I haven't traded oil, I think, since I first uh, joined, um, started really getting in the markets. Uh, oil is one of the big ones I did trade, but I don't, it's been a long time since I have traded oil. Uh, but just wanted to bring that up. And then um, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Again, this massive descending wedge. I expect a huge move out of here. At least to test that that 240 mark again. Um, again on Friday, a lot of uh, craziness occurred on Friday. Opened up, essentially saying that um, Tesla was essentially going to get rid of uh, their low cost vehicle, only for it to come out saying that uh, Riders was uh, incorrect and lying about that. And then right before close on Friday. You also had Elon Musk come on and say that they're going to talk about to give some good information on robo taxis on August 8th, which uh, if you are keeping up to date on FSD, uh, they are extremely, extremely close to completing FSD. If they get approval, uh, you could start talking about robo taxis and then having the robo taxis service. So you don't now no one have to buy a car. You just can uh, essentially uh, contribute for that service. And then you can always have a vehicle. So why would people want to purchase cars at that point? And so that's what uh, the robo taxi service is and something that Elon and Tesla has been working on for a very long time. If that comes to fruition, uh, if we get some information then that may be coming next year, that would be incredible and you can see and then you can see how this whole technicals would play out um that we could even potentially break this bigger wedge here this bigger wedge that we've been developing we may uh, continue to chop here depending on what happens with the market but uh you get robo taxi hype this thing can break us back to all-time highs we're not even including humanoids i think the humanoid stuff would uh the fsd stuff would essentially start that big run and then on top of that, you're going to have humanoids on top of that. And so that I think we'll see the impact with that within the next year or some big announcement on humanoids as there has been new information that has dropped from Apple essentially looking into humanoids. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But again, you have to understand that Tesla is a very unique position is they have the cash flow. They have they know how to mass produce these robots, which is a huge issue. Uh, for a lot of companies that Tesla is essentially can't already solve. And then they also have, uh, again, the AI uh, associated with that uh, because, again, they've created FSD uh, and they will they can expand on that and start doing other industrial humanoids because that's where the biggest gap is right now. I'm not expecting humanoids to be in your home for the next for a while, uh, maybe a lot sooner than you think, but I think another you know five to ten years you can expect the humanoids to be in the homes. But right now they're going to take over the jobs and that those industrial jobs first that nobody wants to do, and then I think that's how they'll expand in. But with all that being said, it, the timing of everything looks like it's playing out with this wedge, and so with the FSD news, um, it shot up uh, towards the back half of the day. So this might actually, we might actually get a run up this week um, going into earnings because of humanoids. I uh, definitely want to look into the uh, the call from Elon Musk and see what uh, he has to say about that. Uh, that would be really interesting to see what he talks about as far as the robo taxis. And then um, hopefully here's some more news on uh, humanoids from that point. But again, it's uh, playing this wedge very, very well, holding this 150 very well. Uh, so continue to watch those levels uh, coming into Monday. Uh, so excited about what to happen here. But again, big level being the 150 mark here. And then if we break out, if that news uh, breaks us out of this uh, 180 level, uh, could see a nice, like I said, a nice run up to potentially uh, maybe the, one, the 240, 230 mark here in the next coming weeks going into uh, earnings. And then uh, if they do well, may break us out or maybe just start selling off and continue to chop. Uh, till we get that cut. If that cuts in the next couple of weeks, or next couple of months, maybe that cut will occur. 
I know around June, this thing actually breaks out um, because of FSD or whatever the case is. Maybe we're pricing a recession. I'm kind of hoping we're pricing a recession in the next like two months or so, uh, because then that would kind of, I don't think Tesla's going to break down to 100 again. Um, again, it all depends on new news. Uh, Tesla was 100 bucks, you know, a year and a half ago. And so I, I just don't, at this point, I don't see that currently happening. I think this may be your lowest point you'll get Tesla. Uh, always can be wrong about that. So again, this is not financial advice, but um, I, I really don't see at this point uh, with the news that Tesla has lined up, it's going to be uh, cha life changing, right? It's going to change the way our society functions. Tesla is very good at that. They did that with EVs. Now they're getting ready to move into FSD. Uh, so again, imagine the amount of money you can save and not owning a car, but just uh, essentially um, buying into that service and then having that uh, would be much simpler than essentially um, paying for a car, paying for insurance. Since insurance is skyrocketing right now, uh, Tesla could take a huge advantage of that with robo taxis. And if they, uh, again, I have to understand the approval process for that, it's going to be extremely hard as well uh, to allow robots to just drive people around. Uh, again, there's a huge concern and you have to build trust and that takes a long time. That's not just the overnight thing. So but with all that being said, again, could be really interesting to see how this does play out. So, uh, again, I think now is a golden opportunity to be buying Tesla, uh, but we'll continue to watch to see how that plays out. Let's take a quick uh, look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA got slammed on um, on Thursday, obviously, and this is what's concerning uh, if we start pulling back with the semiconductor stuff, I think fed into this as well. Uh, right now, it's really holding this 863 I would really like it if the market really starts selling off. I can see Nvidia just selling off because of the markets. Uh, I really like this uh, 770 mark, and even lower if we can fill this gap down here. Potentially see a brief visit under 700 would be really great. I would definitely like to get into Nvidia if it does do that. Uh, but again, be very careful. Um, I think at these levels are still very high. I still think the functionality needs to be be there. Again, but again because of supply, it's going to be extremely hard to keep up with uh, the demand. It's already being hard to keep up with the demand. Uh, so it can could potentially get worse. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So there could be a big correction in the future only because the supply is not there. If the supply is not there, uh, you could start seeing some hits in these forecasts. So we'll see how things work out, but continue to watch that there. Uh, PayPal, like I've talked about, uh, still really interested in this one. I uh, want this to uh, still correct back down. Uh, to the 57 mark uh, so watching that closely there uh, again this playing this range uh, from um, the 57 to the 67 uh, i think we can revisit this one more time may have another bad earnings and potentially even come down here uh, who knows but we'll see uh, right now they're slated for uh, april 30th uh, for their earnings so watching that one closely as well shop is another big one i want to get into as well Kind of hoping this thing does correct a little bit uh, more than it currently has. Again, this was at $25 uh, not that long ago and then almost uh, breaking 100 again here. Uh, looking to see if this can at least try to correct back down to the 50. Again, if this thing really starts to sell off, uh, which I think once we press in a recession, we'll get, I think, another month or two of uh, pretty heavy selling. And then wherever we land at that point, like I said, you want to generate your list beforehand. So when it starts to occur, you have your eye on the prize on whatever you want uh, before we go into the next. Because I do believe we will be turning on the printers again at some points. And then uh, you're going to want to be in a good position by the time that happens. So it's good to plan ahead of time before that does occur. Now, Boeing, again, don't know, understand why it's at 183, uh, despite all their planes falling out of the sky. So <laughs> with that being said, uh, again, this level is very critical. This 180 level, we're flirting back down with it. Uh, if this thing does break, it can start bringing the market with it. That's just kind of a strong representation of the value of stocks out there. Uh, and right now, it's it's looking pretty weak. So we'll continue to watch to see if this does break it. Or we could bounce and try to retest again up around that 200 level. But again, um, it's in a very uh, particular, uh, a very uh, weak state right now. So I, if we do break this, uh, we could start seeing some trouble with value. Uh, value and essentially financials have been holding up the markets over the last year. It's really been tech, but tech, the mag seven has gone down to like the mag three at this point. So if the mag three go down, then um, uh, the rest of the market's going to be hurting pretty bad. Uh, JPM obviously uh, doing earnings here on Friday. 
Uh, so we'll see what happens here. They're at a very high point, all-time highs. Uh, expecting this thing to start correcting back at some point. Don't know what earnings cycle that's going to be. Uh, but again, they're they're accumulating more assets than they shouldn't be because they're already grossly uh, own a huge part of the market and banks shouldn't have that much power. But nonetheless, JPM is still getting that power. So again, understand that they are in a very good position. Again, the, our, the Federal Reserve will support JPM uh, to the very extent because it's essentially our financial system. And if that breaks, uh, they're trying to consolidate all banks is the theory. But ultimately, again, understand that it's just the way um, uh, the system is going to work and understand again that it will take a long time for uh, again the dollar to just be removed again it's not going the dollar the dollar is just not going to plummet there's too much writing on the dollar uh, again despite uh, what the world the current world is going in again the us is still even even though there may be some corruptness and um, some other things going on there they're not as bad as the rest of the world and people still have a lot of trust in the us uh, i think we're flirting with that trust and on what people actually expect from the U.S., but again, understand that it's still going to take a long time to come off the dollar. It's just not going to be a quick thing. So with all that being said, if you made it this far, I do appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.